when you study data structure, graph, or matrix, you have learned two important concepts depth first search, DFS, and the breadth first search, BFS. Many problems, such as traversal or find paths, can be solved using these two. Today, I'm going to give a brief recap of these two concepts and uh, use them to solve one problem. Find the shortest path between cells in matrix. This is a question statement. Given a M times N matrix, where each element can either be 0 or 1, we need to print the shortest path between a given source cell to a destination cell. The path can only be created out of a cell if its value is 1. When talking about the matrix, we know it is a two-dimensional array. Many algorithms used for array can be applied to matrix, such as binary search. Do you know matrix can be used to represent a graph? It is called adjacency matrix. A graph of V nodes can be represented as a V by V matrix. If there's an edge from node U to V, we can put the value 1 at the cell UV. If there's no kinetic edge between them, or the node with itself, the value in cell is 0. So many graphs algorithms can be used to solve matrix problems. In this tutorial, we are going to apply two important algorithms in graph, depth first search and the breadth first search to solve our problem, find the shortest path in matrix. First, let me recap these two concepts. When we study tree, we have learned depth first search. We visit the root node and then visit each of root's adjacent nodes. When we visit the adjacent node K, we visit all K's adjacent nodes before going on to roots and adjacent nodes. So we explore the high steps nodes before backtracking to other upper level nodes. DFS can be implemented using recursion or stack. DFS in graph is similar to DFS in tree. The algorithm starts with an initial node or source node in graph. This node can be arbitrary or specified by input. Since graph may contain circles, we may come to the same node again and have an infinite loop. To avoid this, we use a Boolean array visited to keep track whether we can visit the node or not. Now let's look at the breadth first search. In tree, we start from the root node again and explore all its adjacent nodes before moving on to the next level's adjacent nodes. In graph, BFS starts from the source node and traverses the graph level by level, meaning visit all the neighbor's nodes prior to moving on to the next level nodes. Choosing which algorithm to use is case by case. If the goal is to visit every node in the whole tree or graph, both DFS and the BFS have the same linear complexity. If we have a very large tree or graph, DFS may take us to go too far from the original node. The time complexity of backtracking is higher since all depths probably need to be traveled. In BFS, we travel level by level. Once the key or the destination is reached, we can stop. BFS will give the optimal solution. On the other hand, DFS is better about space because it is not required to store all of the children at each level. Well, BFS do require more memory space. The space complexity of BFS can be quadratic or higher. Today, we'll find the solutions using both. In matrix, many problems can be solved using DFS. You may have seen it in action in find a path or find a number of islands in matrix. Before jumping, there are a couple of things to be aware of. First, the given matrix may or may not be a direct transformation from graph. Second, we assume we can move in four directions, which are up, down, left, and right, and move one cell at a time. If you are not sure, please verify with the interviewer. The basic idea of the implementation stays the same. Now we are ready to apply DFS to the question, find the shortest path in matrix. The algorithm uses recursion. These are the steps. When we study graph, we know that 
BFS is an efficient method to find the shortest path in graph if the graph is undirected and unweighted. Here we use similar idea using BFS. It is called Lie algorithm. The steps are here. Now it's time to look at the code. This is DFS. It will return the length or count of the shortest distance from given source to given destination. First, we initialize a two-dimension Boolean array visited. It will check all cells visited status. If visited UV is false, the cell can be visited. If it is true, it means it has been visited. We can skip it. Then we use the recursion function visitorutil to visit the cells from the start position to the end position. This function has the input parameters matrix, start, end, and visited. Additionally, there are two parameters worth mentioned, shortest and the dist. The dist keeps track the distance from current cell to the start cell. Its initial value is zero. Shortest is used to track the smallest number of the distance. Its initial value is integer's max value. Inside the recursion function, we check the termination condition. If the cell is beyond the matrix range, or if the visited is true, return max value. If the current cell points to the destination cell, we reach the goal, we can return the result. Otherwise, continue. Mark these cells visited to be true. Visit the cells for neighbors, up, down, left, and the right cell by calling recursion with distance plus one. We reset the visited to false for the backtracking purpose. Shortest distance will be the smallest number of distance. If no path is found, the function returns the original default value, which is the integer dot max value. This is a utility function to check whether the cell is valid to visit it. Either the XY pal is within the matrix range, or the visited is false. Now, let's take a look at the code BFS. It will print the shortest path from the source to the destination. First, we define a cell class with a field x, y, dist, and prev. x is a row number in the matrix, y is a column. Dist is used to keep track the distance from this cell to the source cell. Prev records the last visited cell or its parent cell. It helps to find the sequence of the cells along the path. At the top of the function, it checks whether the start and end cells values are zero. If either of them is zero, it means there's no path and return. Next is to define a two-dimensional array cells to keep track the cells visiting status. It functions the same as a two-dimensional Boolean array visited in DFS and store more information. We initialize each cell with row number, column number. The distance initial value is integer's max value, and the prev is null. Now we create an empty queue and enqueue the source cell. It has distance of zero. We also define two variables, type of cell. Dest will store the destination if it is found, and the p is a pointer to current cell in process. Inside the while loop, pop a node from the queue. If the node is destination, we can exit from the loop. Otherwise, visit each four adjacent cells by calling visit function. Inside the function, we enqueue each valid cell in the queue with plus one distance, and also save the parent cell in prev. The last step is to check the variable dest. If the dest is no, it means destination is not reached. We simply return. If the dest cell is not null, we retrieve all previous cells starting from destination cell and save them in a list. Finally, we print all cells in this list as a result of shortest pass. In the main function, we have a matrix defined like this. We are going to run three cases. The first one is from upper left to lower right. The start cell is 0, 2. The end cell is 3, 4. 
Now we run the DFS to get distance seven. Then we run BFS. We get the path from start cell to end cell. The count of paths between cell is seven. Now we run the second case. The direction is from upper right to lower left. The start cell is two four, and the end cell is three two. We run DFS. The shortest path returns three. The BFS returns this. In the third case, we define start cell two one, in which the value is zero, end cell three three. We run the code. The return from DFS is integer max value. The return from DFS is empty list. This is all notation. Using DFS, the time complexity is O n square. The space complexity is O n square. Using BFS, the time complexity is O n square. The space complexity is O n square. Please note, all notation is for the worst case scenario. DFS search for all possible paths in the matrix from the starting point to the destination until all possibilities are exhausted. On the other hand, BFS stop when the destination node is found. Therefore, to find the shortest path, BFS would be an ideal choice. That's it for find the shortest path between cells in matrix. Please leave your comments below. I'm Vivian. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I will talk to you soon.